when I talk to organizations, I say like, I don't, I don't want people to be charity hoppers. I don't want to be another name on somebody's list. I want to be their favorite charity. I want to be their charity of choice. They love us. We're going to be with them through their entire lives and ultimately end up in their will. And you know, like where they're like, we love you. And this is what we want to support. We want our kids to support this. We want our families to support it. But that takes, uh, that takes a longer commitment. And I know a lot of people are, you know, in the day and age that we live in, we want quick wins. We want instant gratification, but the, the real, you know, joy and the real stuff happens when you invest in the long term. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this episode of Jim and Java and the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. I'm excited to have with us today longtime development professional Mary Valoni. Mary spent years working for the American Cancer Society, ALS, and Special Olympics, and also has been a consultant for the past 10 years helping nonprofit organizations. Mary brings a wealth of experience and I think you're gonna really enjoy this message. And stay tuned to the end because Mary's gonna share a couple of tidbits at the very end that I think you're gonna really enjoy. So Mary, take it away. Uh, but yeah, so I have been in the nonprofit sector for about 20 years and have been, you know, as a fundraiser and then um, I put on this big event, I put on a half a million dollar fundraiser in Southwest Missouri during the Great Recession, a first year event and people were like, what in the world did you just do? <laughs> so we net a half a million dollars that first year, we net 600,000 the next year and then we net 700,000 the next year. And, and, and then I ended up starting to teach people how to raise money because <laughs> clearly something was working. Uh, but yeah, so I have um, just loved the the opportunity to teach and train um, and just help large, organiza large and small organizations and individuals uh, raise the funds they need and um, do it in a, in a way that's not overwhelming or stressful. I know so many people have fear around fundraising and I just love to debunk that and help people really see how much joy they can find in, in raising funds for their the causes that they love. In your time being in development and raising money and being a nonprofit leader, what have you seen are some of the real keys to success for being a leader in a nonprofit and also in the area of fundraising? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a core, uh, you know, essential for somebody who's going to be successful is that they really do like people, <laughs> you know, it, that always helps a lot is that they're, they're interested, they're genuinely, um, you know, looking forward to getting to know other people and their interests and what they do. Uh, but relationships are obviously key to the work that we do in the nonprofit sector. And uh, I love that part of it, but I also love when people have the ability to be really creative and they're, they don't look at just the goal as like, oh, that's a number that we're trying to reach. It's like, how can we bring our community get together? How can we bring people around this number and really work towards this goal together? What would you say are some of the key characteristics that make a good development person? Uh, I would bet one of the first things you're gonna say is a good sense of humor because uh, <laughs> you and I get a few laughs even before, uh, before coming on. What, what are some of the, the, the uh, key characteristics? I think that, you know, the best fundraisers that are out there are really the ones that are, are fairly driven, <laughs> you know, that they they don't, um, you know, really take no as a, you know, taking it personally. So like the characteristics of like just being able to to step out and to do, to be bold and to be, you know, just courageous in your your approach and not really not taking anything personally because, you know, oftentimes when we do ask for funds, people are either in a season where they can give or they're not. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like you or they don't like your cause. It's just that they're not interested in maybe the project or they're not interested in, you know, that particular ask that's being made. So I find that, yeah, just those that those of us out there who are pretty goal oriented achievers tend to do fairly well because we, um, you know, aren't afraid to try several different approaches uh, to to get to that end result. And I have to remind people that that people give to people. 
You know, no matter how great your cause is, people are still giving to people. And if they trust you and they believe that you're actually being honest, uh, that's a great characteristic to inviting somebody in to give to your organization. Well, Mary, we are all about uh, action steps and moving forward, um, tips and suggestions that we can jump into and do right away. What would you recommend? What are some tips some suggestions, some action steps that you'd recommend for um, individuals who either are one person shops, they're trying to um, do everything from executive director to development director to PR person, or someone who's got a one person uh, development office. I cannot, um, <laughs> I, can, I cannot lean on on this heavy enough, um, the power of a volunteer. And this was back to my American Cancer Society days, is that, you know, they, each staff member was responsible for about a quarter million, you know, $250,000 each. And so when you're thinking about that kind of money on the shoulders of one person, there is no way that one person can raise that money by themselves. You're gonna run out of contacts, you're gonna run out of connections, you're gonna be exhausted and burnt out. And so the best use of your time, the best resource is your volunteers. And, you know, so often our leaders, executive directors and beyond think that, well, they need to join the Chamber of Commerce or they need to join, um, you know, Junior League or some of these other Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis that are out there, which are all fantastic and great. But instead of you joining them, if you recruited one person who serves in leadership in those organizations, you will get their 20 plus, 30 plus, 40 plus years of investment in those organizations. So I just really encourage you to, instead of feeling like, oh, I have to be the person who puts myself out there, instead identify one person from each one of those industries that you're trying to get into and go befriend them go reach out and say, you know what, I'd love to create a committee. I'd love to bring a group of people together who could help us, you know, bring their expertise to the table and help us raise X amount of dollars. And, you know, you bring your insight, your information, you know, the things that you're already so good at and bring that to the table. So building teams is number one in my book. <laughs> so literally uh, my book, Fundraising Freedom, I, you know, that is the highlight of, of what I teach is just I, really identifying and listing a team. And those volunteers will ultimately ride you through uh, into whatever goal you're trying to accomplish. <laughs> so I'm like, get those volunteers booked and in. And I'm like, you know, not every volunteer is going to be a shining star. Not everyone is going to do everything that you had expected them to do. But you know what? You're paying them nothing. <laughs> so you're not out anything when you recruit them in. So I would just highly recommend that. Well, one of the areas that you've written about, and I've done some videos and written myself on the same topic, is that of the scarcity mentality. And I know you and I bristle a little bit in that mentality. Would you mind unpacking what the scarcity mentality is? Um, absolutely. Well, thank you for asking, because this is one of my favorite topics. <laughs> because I do think that it has impacted so many of our organizations organizations and and I don't think that we realize that we're even doing it you know it's just it's you know we are expected and I think that we think that there's this pie that's sitting out there and if if you and your charity takes that piece of the pie that that's one less piece for me and I have to remind people that I'm like no, my pie is that, I mean, I could go eat at some nice restaurant and pull from that pie and give it to you. <laughs> you know, So so there's really an, an overabundance of funds that are available to all of our organizations. But I do think that the scarcity mindset creeps in, not only in our personal budgets, but in our organizational budgets, just because we have this expectation of, okay, how much is enough? How much is it going to take for us to actually fulfill the mission that we've set out? And if that dollar amount is more than what you're comfortable with, people hit kind of that, they hit that ceiling. And this is where you have to start, you have to continuously be stretching yourself as a leader to say, you know what, we're going to go for bigger. There's more people that need our help. There's more people that we need to reach. And the the best way to approach that is really to, I, to take a good look in the mirror, <laughs> like, you know, is to have a conversation with yourself. And so I just challenge uh, anyone who's, you know, watching or listening that it's like that you, you know, really look at the mission of your organization and just don't put the ceiling on it. 
do not allow yourself to get that scarcity mindset or just say, oh, we could stretch that dollar a little bit further. Instead, it's like, go get more dollars. Well, that's a great segue to uh, you have been such a uh, just a real encouragement to me with all the materials that you offer. Um, you you mentioned your book. You've got, uh, you know, we you, you and I work together on a fully funded uh, webinar. And do uh, you just you do so many things. Share with our audience a little bit about some of the materials that you provide uh, at uh, uh, you know, some at no cost, and then also to some of the services that you provide. And then how can people get a hold of you? Yeah. So, I mean, the best way to to touch base with me is through maryvaloni.com. And uh, Valoni is just V as in Victor, A-L-L-O-N-I. Um, but on my website, I have, yeah, several free resources. Um, I have this checklist that I created a, a few years ago, and I, I think that it's so powerful because sometimes we just need to know, okay, where are the holes in our fundraising? Where's the holes in the system? So um, you can actually download my checklist for free, and then I also have a workbook that's free on my website. And those two resources, I'm like, hey, if you're just getting started and you're like, I just wanna get my arms wrapped around, how can I fundraise a little bit better? Those are really great uh, downloads for you to get started. Of course, you mentioned like, you know, my book is a good resource on Amazon, uh, but I also, the program that you and I had worked together on was, yep, our fully funded, uh, summit that we had done but fully funded is a program that i lead for uh, ministry leaders and missionary le you know leaders that are out there kind of that faith-based sector and and really uh this is just once again creating community uh giving people an opportunity to do that i mentioned my mastermind um and you can actually apply on my website at maryvaloni.com but everything's on maryvaloni.com so just you know hey jump over there scan you know the resources that are available and you know if there's something that i can help you with i would love that it's <laughs> like i love i love to hold people's hands and just show them how they can do that but in the end it's not that you need me for the long haul it's really just, hey, show me what I need to do. What am I missing? In, and then, you know, I let you fly from there. <laughs> so that's really it in a nutshell. So, yeah, thank you so much for letting me share. Oh, that's terrific, Mary. Well, any final thoughts, any final comments, uh, any things that uh, you just wish you knew when you were kind of starting out or things that were uh, for any final pearls of wisdom? Yeah. So, I mean, the one thing that I wish I would have known <laughs> when I was getting started was really just, just the fact that, man, this is the long haul. Like when you're fundraising you, in relationships in general is that you're in them for the long haul. It's not the short wins, you know, and although those are fun and when somebody drops a check in the mail or, you know, they just out of the blue, you get a donation and you're like, whoa, like we don't even know those people. Like where did that come from? That's great. But for me, I, I love, you know, just that long term relationship and watching somebody go from a stranger to like a, a die hard advocate for your cause. And when I talk to organizations, I say like, I don't, I don't want people to be charity hoppers. I don't want to be another name on somebody's list. I want to be their favorite charity. I want to be their charity of choice. They love us. We're going to be with them through their entire lives and ultimately end up in their will. And you know, like where they're like, we love you. And this is what we want to support. We want our kids to support this. We want our families to support it. But that takes a, that takes a longer commitment. And I know a lot of people are, you know, in the day and age that we live in, we want quick wins. We want instant gratification. But the the real you know, joy and the real stuff happens when you invest in the long term. I'm, I love the relationships and just, I'm always overjoyed when people are like, we love you guys. <laughs> like, this is our charity. We don't want to leave. We want to be with you. So um, I, I would just encourage people to shoot for that um, in their fundraising efforts. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our time with Mary Valoni. Didn't Mary bring some great tips and great suggestions for us? I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also make sure that if you aren't currently subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and uh, click the bell to be notified of future videos. And also, if you need to reach out to me with questions, you can do, do so at multiple platforms on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can reach out to me at Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And of course, email me at any time at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. So as we always say, we strive to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you next time.